uh, use boleh tak minta kita punya speaker untuk identify diri dia sebab saya nak jadikan dia co-host
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon. We are going to begin our webinar with Umul Kitab Al-Fatihah. Thank you all for, for finding the time and joining today's webinar. I wish you welcome and selamat datang to the first Endomological Society of Malaysia webinar series 2021. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Yahoo Stazi Chik and I am from University Technology Mara Sarawak, Muka Campus. It is my honor to be a moderator for this first Entoma webinar series 2021. I'm glad to welcome our invited speaker, Prof. Dr. Han yun Su, the president of the Entomological Society of Korea from Cheonnam National University, South Korea, Dr. Nurul Wahida Osman, the deputy president of Entoma, and also the head of the Center for Insect Systematics, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, representing the president of the Entomological Society of Malaysia, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. We have received more than 300 participants who have registered in this webinar. Those who are not able to join us in this Zoom platform, you may consider viewing our webinar in Entoma official Facebook Live. Today's Entoma webinar is a jointly organized webinar with the Center for Insect Systematics, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, UKM, and also with the Entomological Society of Korea. The Entomological Society of Malaysia and Korea have signed MOU during the third International Symposium of Insects, ESOIS, at Langkawi in 2018. Distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen, We are now going to listen to the opening speech delivered by the Deputy President of the Entomological Society of Malaysia and also the Head of Center for Insect Systematics, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, representing the President of the Entomological Society of Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Nurul Wahida Osman. Thank you, Mr. Yahoo Stazi. Um, good afternoon to all. Um, on behalf of um, Entomological Society of Malaysia, um, I would like to welcome all of you to the first webinar organized by Entomological Society of Malaysia, Entoma. So this is the collaboration with Center for Insect Systematics and also Entomological Society of Korea. Um, as mentioned by Mr. Yahoo Stazi, this uh, initiation of this webinar is based on the agreement of um, letter of understanding signed by both president of Entoma and also Entomological Society of Korea back in 2008 um, at Bayview Hotel Langkawi where we had our third international symposium on insects. So this LOU was signed uh, by our former uh, Entoma president, um, Dr. Muzamil Mustafa and also Prof. Uh, Yoon uh, J.B. Uh, we think this is the best way um, to fulfill the sign uh, LOU that is to activate the networking between both society as one of the content of this LOU is to promote and develop academic cooperation through joint academic meetings and seminar. So we are honored today uh, to have the new president of Entomological Society of Korea, uh, Professor Dr. Han. Uh, honoring the invitation from Entoma to share his expertise today. Um, I pass this session to our moderator to introduce our speaker today. Thank you. I hope you enjoy listening to this webinar. Thank you, Dr. Nuru Wahida, for the opening speech. Before we begin with our webinar, may I briefly introduce to you our invited speaker, Prof. Dr. Han yun Su is the president of the Entomological Society of Korea and he is a professor from the Department of Applied Biology, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Cheongnam National University, Gwangju, South Korea. 
He graduated with a bachelor's degree in biology from Sun Chun Ang University, Asan, Korea, and master's degree in zoology from Korea University. He also received his PhD and master's degree in entomology from University of Wisconsin, Wisconsin uh, Madison, United States. Some of his research projects are including the development of edible insect-based pet snacks and animal feeds. Besides that, he also worked on toll and IMD signaling cascade with the yellow mealworm, Tenebrio monitor. He also worked on viral RNA extraction and diagnosis kit for Atlavi viruses, including, including dengue and Zika from mosquitoes, where the kits are commercialized to Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, KCDC, and 16 climate change sectors surveillance centers. In addition, he also involved with the development of viral RNA extraction and diagnosis kit for severe fever with thrombocytopenia cytopenia syndrome, SFTS virus from ticks where the kits are commercialized and distributed to KCDC and 16 climate change vector surveillance, sur surveillance survey center. And glad to welcome Prof. Dr. Han yun -Soo with his keynote presentation entitled Recent Trends on Edible Insects in Korea. Prof. Dr. Han yun -Soo, the webinar is yours. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let me. Uh, okay. Let me make sure my PowerPoint is shared with you. So, hold on a second. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Is it okay now? Can you see the slide? Yes. Yes, yes bro. Okay, excellent, excellent. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, today I'd like, uh, I'm going to talk on recent trends on edible insect industry in Korea. Uh, but uh, I'd like to uh, uh, start uh, Basically, you know, people getting into my talk, I'd like to give a special thanks to Professor Wan Fatuma Juhara, who is currently serving as president of the Entomological Society of Malaysia, and also to all the participants and organizers. Okay, uh, you know, you just heard about my background uh, about uh, like a minute ago. Uh, let me briefly introduce what I was doing. Uh, actually, when I was in Wisconsin, I was working on juvenile hormone binding protein with the <clears throat> uh, MOS model, tobacco hormone model. And also uh, for my PhD, I was working on serine prolease from mosquito. Uh, that uh, transmit uh, malaria. And then I, after getting PhD, I went to Colorado State University. And then uh, I was working on how malaria parasite penetrate into the mid-gut epithelial cell. With the uh, uh, four-year works, um, one of the key papers that I have published is that uh, <clears throat> we call it time bomb model. When malaria parasite penetrates the medical cell, the medical cell is becoming apoptotic, and then they are, uh, and then two, uh, the, this apoptotic cell eventually comes up uh, from the medical epithelial cell, but then the other two healthy cell is 
uh, like uh, uh, completely heal as time goes by. That's what we I published. And then with this publication, I was lucky enough to get the job at Jeonnam National University, Gwangju, Korea. And the first uh, major research was uh, at the time I was involved in butterfly uh, uh, festival, uh, which was held in Hampyeong County. But at the time when they mass rear butterfly, uh, like uh, during the last install lobby, somehow they are all dropped dead. So that uh, they were not sure why they are dropped dead. So that I went to the uh, butterfly festival and mass rearing facility. I got the, quite a lot of dead uh, butterfly lobby. And then I got the uh, sequences and I found the, uh, uh, one of the uh, famous uh, baculoviruses uh, called granulovirus. So we sequenced it and published. And then I jumped to the Peters model, uh, the edible insect model, yellow mealworm, Canebrio molitor model. We sequenced the entire genome. We did the transcriptome analysis to study insect uh, immune system, insect defense mechanism. And then most recently, uh, one of my PhD students uh, he was doing, he was developing uh, the uh, flabby virus detection kit. And also, uh, for example, Zika, Dengue, West Nile, yellow fever, and Japanese encephalitis virus. So that eight different flabby virus we can detect at one time together. And then most uh, uh, recent one was we uh, developed a, uh, severe fever with the thrombocytopenia syndrome virus. Um, uh, every year about 30 to 40 people are, are dead due to the, this SFTS virus, but we do not have the solid uh, detection kit, uh, especially for the tick sample, so that we developed it. And then we are currently commercialized and distributed to the KCDC. Okay, that's about my background. And then now I'm good from now on, I'm going to get into part one. What is the traditional insect industry in Korea? It's about from in between 1980 to 2000. As you may know, as you may know, silk industry was also one of the major insect industry in Korea. And also the bee, honeybee related industry. But as time goes by, the silk industry and bee industry is kind of declining, you know. So, uh, so uh, and also our government has invested quite a lot of money to develop the natural enemies in our country. Uh, but at the beginning, it turns out to be really good, but at the end, it was not that good. So, and then uh, we moved to the uh, medicinal insect and uh, butterfly, like a festival, so-called cultural entomology, cultural insect. And then recently, we were focusing edible insect industry and uh, along with the animal feed uh, industry. Okay, as you know, there are a couple of direction uh, with the insect model. Uh, you know, with the insect model, we can do the like biotechnology or biomimetic research. At the same time, we can do the cultural insect education or uh, bioremediation. But at the same time, the animal feed, natural enemy, and pollinating. Uh, like uh, so roughly we can divide it into three different groups. So let me get into the silkworm industry in Korea briefly. As you know, this is the life cycle of silkworm starting from the silkworm egg and first insta larvae, second insta 
so third instant lobby, fourth instant lobby, and fifth instant, which is the last instant lobby, and they're becoming <coughs> uh, like uh, pupating, and then at the end, they like adults, male or a female uh, silkworm adult is coming out of the cocoon, and then they are mating, and then they lay eggs. So these are the typical uh, cocoon that uh, our country uh, is currently producing, which is quite common, uh, like uh, uh, most of the countries uh, in the world. So this is not something new, but this was the uh, very uh, traditional uh, uh, like uh, research or uh, like uh, ongoing project that we are doing on a uh, like um, yearly basis. And also we basically uh, uh, producing golden silk strain. However, in terms of silk, uh, like uh, we are not uh, using uh, this golden silk uh, for the fabric, for the human clothes. So we are trying to do uh, like a find an alternative way to use the silk to boost the uh, uh, silk in this or sericulture industry. One of the interesting story, I think, as you may know, DNJ is coming from the silk powder, which was originally coming from the uh, the, uh, the the silkworm uh, silkworm or uh, plant host, mulberry host, right? And this DNJ uh, uh, basically plays an important role in decreasing blood sugar in humans. So in our country, quite a lot of silk powder is uh, like a, uh, quite a lot of people. Is, uh, is purchasing the silk powder for their uh, like uh, blood sugar control. Uh, Prof Han. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Could you please make the slides uh, in full screen mode? Full? Full screen. You mean, you mean that's what I did now? All right. Uh, do you think the screen size is not big? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're having uh, a presenter layout other than, uh, yeah, this is much better. Oh, this is much better, okay. This, this one is okay. much better. Okay, 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 sorry, sorry. Okay, so basically uh, the DNJ uh, chemicals uh, from silk powder basically inhibit the uh, alpha glucosidase enzyme so that uh, disaccharide is not going, does not, become to monosaccharide so that you can uh, basically control your uh, sugar, uh, uh, blood sugar in your blood vessel. Okay, the next one, okay, this is the another uh, like a uh, uh, colorful silk form. Uh, actually, at the beginning, we didn't make this kind of uh, color uh, silk form, but this all of a sudden in our country, like uh, most of the city and county or uh, province, they are having a insect-based festival so that to attract the peoples, uh, they are actually feeding the uh, like uh, 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 edible, uh, like a uh, color, right? So that, uh, you know, we can like in a transient manner, but we can make the color uh, silk home so that uh, especially the children, they love it. Okay, and then the next one is, this one is the production of silicone cordyceps. Okay, so, uh, okay, this is the fifth instal uh, silicone lobby and then they inoculate the cordyceps and then basically in doing so, they are infecting silicone lobby and at the end, the mushroom is coming out of the, uh, uh, like a silicone pupae. And another thing that we are currently doing is to genetically trying to produce genetically modified silkworm uh, along uh, in order to like uh, 
high value uh, material. For example, human EPO gene or other uh, human gene. So as you can see, the silicon, uh, the, the top, the, at the right side, that the top one is the normal, so which doesn't give the red fluorescence, uh, whereas the bottom, the red silicon lobby uh, gives the strongest a red fluorescence, that's the sign of the uh, genetically modified silicon. But however, as you may guess, uh, this is not actually practical uh, in terms of overproducing like, uh, uh, like a high value, uh, uh, like uh, materials from the silicon because the like uh, uh, the efficiency wasn't that good. So that I don't think we can uh, like uh, develop as a like a industry on the basis of the genetically modified silicone. However, we can publish a good paper, but uh, you know, frankly speaking at the level of industry, it's a long way to go with the genetically modified silicone. Another example is that this slide shows a honeybee related product. The, this one shows the toothpaste. It's about 14 US dollar. The, the, the one in the green color, this is a, uh, like a honeybee related cosmori. It's about $39. And the, the, the one in on the, uh, the right side, that's the propolis, uh, which is quite expensive than the other product, 53 US dollar. And also the honeybee is quite expensive in Korea, $71 and $51, okay? Okay, so uh, I'm going to get into the, uh, you know, this edible insect story. Okay, in Korea, uh, the, there are a couple of, uh, uh, insect groups like a natural enemy pollinator, like uh, insect for food waste management, uh, for example, like a, using black soldier fly and edible insect, medicinal insect and pet insect and animal feed and other. So I'm going to uh, trying to focus on the edible insect today. Okay. And then the well-known uh, edible insect in Korea is the grasshopper silkworm. However, in terms of industry, the mealworm is the best one. Number two is the cricket. Number three is uh, like uh, another beetle, white spotted flower chaffer. It's the, that is quite famous because people believe when we are eating this white spotted flower, chaper, the uh, like uh, <clears throat> lava uh, powder, <coughs> we think that our liver condition is getting better and better. So that's why quite a lot of people, they love to buy this white spotted flower chaper. Okay, so up until now, I covered the uh, traditional insect industry. Basically, what I was mentioning was that uh, like a silicon based industry and honeybee based industry, basically overall, it's going down and down and down. So most of the entomologists and our government sector, they were having hard time how to reboost insect industry in Korea. So, one of the first, uh, 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 sorry, I made a mistake, okay. One of the first turning point for the insect industry in Korea is that like uh, the, all of a sudden in our country, uh, the mayor, governor, and they are uh, like uh, elected by the people so that they would love to meet with the voters at the insect festival venue. 
so politically somehow nicely linked with the insect, like so-called cultural entomology, like an insect festival. So that all of a sudden our country, they are all like uh, most of the city mayor or governor or county governor, they would love to open up and develop the uh, insect-based festival. Well, one of the well-known insect festival in Korea is the Firefly Festival. It, it's a very, very well-known uh, insect festival. After this, the next, probably the best ever uh, like uh, uh, insect uh, festival is the Hampyeong Butterfly Expo. They invest tons of money to build up the infrastructure and etc. Okay, and then they have like a, like over the last fifteen years they uh, do the like annually they are doing the uh, butterfly uh, festivals every spring. So uh, and also uh, the another famous festival is the Yechon area. In this case, Yechon area, in this case, their specialty was uh, honeybee. So that with the honeybee story, they developed the story and uh, this is another successful insect festival in Korea. With this successful uh, festival, insect festival in Korea, somehow uh, like influenced on the insect industry in Korea. Uh, let me summarize what was happening, okay? Number one, sericulture industry has been declined. Thus, we have been trying to find alternative strategy. So, but as I point out, uh, interesting, another good news was that we do not have, have to attend classes on Saturday like every Saturday in Korea since 2012. So that over the weekend, family member, they, they would love to go someplace, but they are loving the insect festival. Family, grandpa, grandma, children, they would love to go to the insect festival. So, so and, and at the same time, uh, number five, mayors and county governors have been willing to invest and develop the unique festival in their own city, in their own province and county. So number seven, accordingly, our government has been investing quite a lot of money for the festival. With this momentum, all of a sudden our government Okay, we are going to invest research fund for the insect festival, insect industry, and for insect infrastructure. So that all of a sudden this insect-based festival somehow drive our government, our government official. So that our government start to invest quite a lot of money. Okay, I'd like to get into the, uh, the first investment for our like uh, in insect industry in Korea. That's about every five year, every five year, we are having a, like a, uh, our government, like a, have a long plan and then invest quite a lot of research fund. Okay, first investment research direction First, screen and select beneficial insect resources. Number two, commercialize insect resources. Number three, support insect farming organization. Number four, educate college students. Number five, improve and develop new policy so that they do not have any uh, like uh, 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 they, are, they do not 
like uh, insect farmer, they do not have any like uh, 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 problem in terms of opening up new insect farming and etc. So that our government, they are willing to like uh, improve the policy or uh, like uh, open the new policy for the insect farming uh, farmers. Okay, so that, uh, you know, we have uh, so many different examples, but I would love to uh, pinpoint what are the patterns that we have uh, like, uh, like published. Okay, this slide shows the mealworm related. Okay, there are many uh, examples. Number one, number one is about, it's related with the reducing obesity or reducing blood sugar or reducing arthritis related inflammation or anti-cancer or um, how to make jelly for mealworm development and mass rearing. And also uh, the cricket-based reduction uh, of liver inflammation. The next one is not the insect, although it's not belongs to insect in terms of uh, classification, but this one, it belongs to one of the key uh, medicinal bugs or arthropod. So the, we call it scolopendra patent. Uh, what we did, we sequenced the entire genome. We sequenced the, all the transcriptome. And then we got the, quite a lot of peptide and we synthesized the, uh, the best to, uh, possible short peptide was, uh, might, which might have a, like a, uh, have an anti-fungal uh, activity, antimicrobial activity, or anti-cancer activity, and etc. So, scolopendrocin seven is the antibacterial, and six antibacterial peptide, and five antibacterial peptide, and scolopendrocin four is the human gut epithelial cell growth. Okay, and then. Another interesting one is that scolopendrocin one has a great potential for atopic dermatitis, atopic dermatitis, skin problem, okay? And also for the uh, cosmetic uh, purpose, like uh, inhibit melanin formation and reducing the wrinkle on your face. Another interesting story from dung beetle. Okay, we got four major patterns. We call it cooperation. Okay, cooperation A3 based anti wrinkle effect, anti fungal, anti cancer, and anti inflammation. Okay, and one example of a commercialization. This one is also on the basis of cooperation. Okay, this one is the insects based antimicrobial peptide, and it was quite good for the men and women in Korea. Another one, uh, Allomirina dichotoma beetle. This one is good for reducing arthritis, inflammation and even for dementia improvement. And, uh, and also it has anti-obesity activity. And white spotted flower chapel, and also we have uh, three different uh, uh, patterns. But as I point out, the white spotted flower chapel lobby is good for the liver improvement. Okay, now I'm getting into the, uh, the period the, from 2016 to 20, uh, which is the most recent five years. Uh, we invest a second, uh, like a second investment for the insect industry in Korea. The, the, the logic behind this one is, as you know, 
the world population goes up and then uh, so we need a lot of protein either plant-based or animal-based however the problem is that we need a lot of land to uh, raise uh, the uh, produce the animal-based proteins and also we have to support quite a lot of water. So to avoid all this problem, what is the alternative one? That's the insect. Not by me, but by FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. They publish edible insect, future prospect for food and food security. This one was published to 2013. And then in 2014, our government translated this English book into Korean and quite a lot of people, they are happy to read it, okay? And then this book uh, argued, like uh, em uh, emphasized that advantage of the insect is environmentally friendly, nutritional value is very high, high feed conversion efficiency and low water requirement. So after you have for, FAO announces that insects are the answer, what was happening in the world? As you all know, 72% of Americans are willing to try insect-based food. And also, if we look at the Google search, so-called Google hit, okay, the book was published 2013, and then after one year, from 2014, 15, <clears throat> this a period, quite a lot of people in the world, they are uh, like uh, searching for the edible insect and the insect industry and etc. <clears throat> so, oh, likewise, our country was also not only the government official, but also people in, in general in our country. They would love to do something. They would love to rear the insect. So the insect farming farmers, their number goes up. For example, from, from 2015, 720 farmers, okay? And then see, 2015, that's the, after two years later, after publishing the FAO publication, see, from 2015, and then all of a sudden, in, in two, 2017, more than 2,000 farmers, they are really, okay? So, but insects are like a, a farmers, they are, they are eager to rear the insect, they are eager to sell the insect. However, they do not know what is the optimal condition to dry the insect. So let me show one example, see? The one in left is looks good, but the one in the right side is, is bad. So that uh, our lab was trying to get the one small grant, the two year grant, we developed, uh, we made a three independent drying machine. One is small, medium size and large size. With this one, uh, like farmers, they can dry the uh, like milum without uh, like uh, uh, overcooking. So that was not the issue anymore in Korea. Drying is not the matter in Korea anymore. Okay, see, this slide shows one a leading company in Korea. That's the kale. We call it Korea Edible Insect Laboratory. The name of the company is the kale. They, they purchase all the uh, like a mealworm uh, lobby, the dry lobby from the mealworm farmers. And then they they produce all the different types of like uh, snacks and energy bar and etc. Look at this, On, this is this other example. And also with Kale and my laboratory together, we got the one big grant, okay, about 3 million US dollar grant like an export research grant for edible insect-based snack for companion animals. 
with the million resources, we developed the million powder, million oil, and uh, uh, like uh, protease, uh, digested, like uh, protein powder, and etc. And then with that, we have a different types of final product. And also we uh, generated a couple of pet food. Like uh, one example is a pessimist, miruwar, wag wag. These are now uh, in, the, in the market and the online. Okay, this the slide, the, this slide shows the level of our capacity to extract the uh, uh, high value material or resources from the insect. So the right size, this one was generated by the Canada. Oh, this one was coming from Thailand, cricket flower. So basically, Korea also can do these types of fundamental like uh, uh, processing uh, uh, and then generated the uh, uh, resources. So that's not the issue here. Now we are getting into from this year, we are having another five year, another five year. Okay, over the last 10 years, I'm going to summarize what was happening in Korea. Number one, number of insect rearing farmer goes up in Korea. Okay, roughly several from 700 to uh, 2000. However, most of the insect farming system is small scale. That's the big problem. So that's why uh, not consistent in terms of pro production, okay? Not reliable in terms of producing in a consistent manner due to the uh, lack of mass rearing production unit in Korea. So the price is really high in Korea. So animal feed company, they would love to give it a try with the insect, edible insect or pet insect, whatever. So basically they come and go. So it's a big issue now. So how can we solve this problem? To solve the problem, we are benchmarking why insect in France. We are trying to like develop and establish a mass rearing company. Otherwise the insect industry in Korea probably sooner or later is declining again. So, Kale, Korea Edible Insect uh, Company, Kale Company, is currently building up relatively big factory, probably biggest one in Korea. So, <coughs> uh, Unless, so my, my final uh, message is that, okay, in our country, government has invested quite a lot of money. Government also support the insect farming farmers like a, like a subsidy, okay? However, unless we establish the big one, probably we are having hard time to jump up insect industry in Korea. That's my conclusion. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Dr. Han Yunsu. I hope you all enjoy this amazing presentation. Now, uh, Prof. Dr. Han Yun Su will answer some questions that were sent to us during the presentation. So the first question, uh, when I look on uh, in our chat box here, uh, let me check first. Uh, question from Purnama from IPB University, Indonesia. What kind of insect being farmed in Korea? How big they are producing per year? 
And then the second question, is there certain insect preferred by consumers as snack? From Purnama, Indonesia. Oh, Purnama, Professor Purnama? Yeah. Wow, he was one of my, uh, like, uh, band members in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, say hello to him. Thank you. So, question number, from, let me answer the, the last answer. Which insect, like, uh, is most popular, right? I think, as I point out, number one is the mealworm. Number two is the, uh, uh, like, uh, okay, let me, let me show the, let me show the, Okay. Uh, number one, frankly speaking, uh, well, I don't know how to say. Okay. Uh, for example, it depends. It depends because uh, the reason that uh, why all of a sudden, uh, why there are so many uh, Korean uh, uh, farmers uh, getting into this insect industry business because this beetle, white spotted flower chapel, this beetle, it has been well known. This is really good for the like a uh, liver, liver. Uh, so uh, people would love to rear this insect because they can make money it, without without mass rearing this insect. That's the one advantage of uh, rearing this one, but for the industrial scale, right? To make like a, a pet snack or animal feed, they would love to use the mealworm, okay? And probably the next one is cricket. And another one is the black soldier fly black soldier fly. The advantage of the black soldier fly, black soldier fly is not edible insect, but the black soldier fly, the life cycle is very short and it's very easy to overproducing within a short time. However, there is a one, uh, a minor or depending on the, depending on the way of you thinking, uh, it could be big or it could be minor, but black soldier phyla, it has a great advantage in terms of mass rearing within a short time. However, you know, as you may guess, black soldier fly has been used for uh, like uh, uh, clearing or removing or digesting food waste material. So the problem is that the end user, let's say, for example, if we are going to buy the a pet snack or animal feed, uh, which was made by, uh, made from black soldier fly larvae or pupae, people, they are very picky about it. They are constantly, oh man, black soldier fly was mass rearing by using such a kind of, you know, uh, bad food waste, which might have a lot of like uh, fungi, bacteria, you know, potentially virus. They are very picky about it. So, so there are good and bad, you know, okay. But in terms of uh, making money, uh, white spotted uh, flower chapel is good, although you can. Um, uh, like a rear, although you don't have to mess rear, okay? So that's the one advantage. So uh, I don't know whether I can, I answer the question uh, from the professor. Uh, 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 All right, uh, so the next question for, from okay. Facebook Live, uh, we got uh, some of the comments uh, from the Professor Idris. Uh, he asked on the question uh, pertaining to the 
let me check again. Uh, how many percentage? Uh, how many percent of Korean food on the table containing insect products? And then the second one, how many percent of food human food contain insect products? This is from Prof. Idris Abdul Ghani. Okay, question number one is the how many Korean food contain insect uh, resources yeah. or insect material? Yeah, insect uh, product. Containing insect product. Yeah, okay. insect material. What was the number two? The second one, how many percent of food human uh, human food contain insect product? How the, many? Uh, how many human food contain insect products? How many percent? Uh, how, how many percentage of the human food contain insect product? Well, uh, in both cases, uh, you know, let me show, oh, let me show. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, here's the one. Okay, people, they are happy to eat energy bar, no problem. No problem at all. This one is well accepted to the citizens. This one is under control, okay? And the snack for the pets, okay? Snack for the pet is also uh, under control. People buy it, okay? The, the, the only problem is the price. So unless you give the like a, a competitive price, uh, you know, okay? So that's the problem. But uh, in general, human, they are eating uh, energy bar and, and also cookie and bread, okay? Bread we are eating. And also we are making sausage. We are making sausage, okay? Basically what we are doing this day, we are trying to, we are in the middle of adding insect uh, like a derived product into the different type of human food. Like for example, pizza and etc. So probably for the next five years, uh, I think very, very critical period whether the, the insect industry in Korea is going to be good or bad. Okay, however, this day, this day, uh, another big area is that, uh, okay, for example, mealworm, okay, the mealworm is good, uh, okay, this mealworm, is good for the human food, right? However, this one is equally is good for uh, like uh, animal feed and also the fishing, aquaculture. So that in Korea, we are trying to use this one for the aquaculture. So, Frankly speaking, this guy, the mealworm and the mealworm and uh, mealworm and mealworm and this black soldier fly, they are competing each other because black soldier fly group, the company, okay, this is the cheapest one. Mealworm is a slightly expensive than the black soldier. However, mealworm, they are eating very clean food. So the people in Korea, they are quite picky actually. So I, I, I don't know whether that's the, uh, uh, that's the answer for the questions. All right, so, uh, so can we, we will open the question yeah. to, the, uh, to the participant now. Uh, Mahmoud Mahbub Hussein. Okay. Uh, he raised his hand. What is the question? Could you please uh, ask the question <clears throat> directly to uh, Prophan? Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? By, can you hear me? Yes, no problem. 
Hussein. Hussein. Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Happy to hear your voice. Yeah, sir, I have a question regarding a Tomo Figi of the silk fiber. As you uh, talk about uh, Sari culture, uh, the rearing of silkworm, and it's also among the uh, food in Pakistan as well. Uh, is uh, does silk fiber edible? Will the FDA does approve? How you think about the edible fibers from different insects or arachnids? Oh, uh, frankly speaking, I do not understand exactly what was your question. Could you repeat one more time? Uh, yes, sir. slowly. No, but, yeah, uh, sir. My question is uh, regarding entomophagy of the silk fiber as uh, oh, you talked oh. about yeah, yeah no yeah, problem yeah, yeah. at all with the silk one powder no problem okay people love yeah, it yeah. yeah does the silk fiber edible will the fda food and the drug administration does approve it how you think about the edible fibers from uh, silk worm that no problem at all I am totally fine with it. The reason, the reason that, that we are having a hard time in Korea is that the labor uh, fee in Korea goes up, right? And also we have to uh, like uh, uh, the cultivate the, what is that? Uh, mulberry tree, right? Mulberry plant to feed the uh, silicon, right? So probably in, in Korea, and Pakistan or uh, like uh, uh, Malaysia or uh, like a more like subtropical region, uh, we do have a problem in terms of mass rearing. But uh, in the Middle East or uh, like subtropical region, probably you do not have a problem so that you can mass rear the mass, you do not have any problem to mass rearing. And also so that you can uh, generate or you can produce quite a lot of silicon powder or silicon derived fiber. Are you are you uh, interested in uh, exporting the silicon fiber from your country to my country? Is that okay? So uh, another question. Yeah. Let me let me read the question from uh, uh, Lee uh, from Taiwan. My question is: uh, Insect foods are commonly eaten as a snack in Southeast Asian country, such as in Thailand. May I know? Do majority of Korean people willing to consume on insect-related food? Thank you. About the willingness. That's a good question. Some people, they love it. Some people kind of intermediate. But however, traditionally we are eating, we've been eating silicon pupae. They love silicon pupae. They love it, okay? So we are not that like hesitating to eat insect. However, so do you know why we are we would love to eat like uh, or drink or eat the silicone powder because silicone powder has the, some healthy benefit. It's really good for our health. So Korea, the people in our country, as long as insect, edible insect or medicinal insect has the strong medicinal effect for their health, they are you willing to eat without a problem. Next question for uh, we have another. I think uh, most of the question uh, they are related to entomophagy here. All right. So hi, Prof. My question is uh, from Bun Ko Yen. How to inculcate the habits of practicing entomophagy? among the publics, given that majority of us have phobia towards the consumption of insects. How to avoid, uh, right? 
to 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 uh, what we call to encourage people. Yep, yep, yep. I got it. Yeah. So our government, uh, they are not only investing research fund and infrastructure, but also they are spending quite a lot of money, like a like a, a major TV broadcasting, YouTube. They are constantly like a, a televised, uh, okay, eating insect is no problem, no big deal. And also to, to encourage people to try insect based food or a drug or medicine. Uh, that's why uh, we are not trying to simply trying to eat the powder because when you just grind it, when you like a, uh, uh, dry it out and then uh, make a powder, then still, okay, even if even it looks like a small powder, fine powder, but there are quite a lot of allergens in that powder. So the allergen could induce, you know, allergy problem on our mouth area or stomach or esophagus and etc. So to avoid that problem, that's why in our country, we are really like uh, doing, we are like uh, uh, doing the, uh, we treat the insect with the proteins so that we chop out the big allergen protein, make it small, a relatively small size protein or peptide so that whenever we are eating, we're trying, uh, you know, we're trying to block the allergy problem. Otherwise the people, they are, like to avoid uh, eating uh, insect-based food or snack. All right, Prof. Another question from Shuhada. Annyeonghaseyo, Prof. Thank Have you. you ever tasted any of the edible insects? Yes, of yeah. course. I, I ate silkworm. Yeah, how does uh, it? Cookie and beetles, the mealworm, no problem. I uh, ate the cricket. How does it taste, bro? In terms of the taste, taste, it's very, uh, it's like a, you know what? It's like a shrimp. Shrimps. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good with your uh, uh, favorite, like a beer or <laughs> no problem. Uh, probably we got a lot of number of questions here. Let me check again. Um, all right, so another question from uh, uh, All right, so let me take well, All right, from Mahendra uh, from Indonesia In wow. your opinion, will insect consumption lead to global food diversification? Are there any side effects if we consume insects regularly? Thank you Food diversity, yes uh, I think the insect-based food for human already it's a one one. Uh, I think it belongs to ethnic, well-known ethnic food in the East Asia and like the South America and Africa and Korea and China and etc. So I think uh, that's not the issue here. So since we are uh, we are having a high-tech biotechnology and food processing technology so that as long as we remove all the concern from the people, okay? So it depends on how you process your insect, your edible insect, then people, I don't think they are going to avoid it. And also I'm always challenging, okay, if we are going to just dry it, powder, make it powder, and then that's not good. We, we have to do one more step so that we can really enhance, okay? The, uh, I mean, the, so that the people are eating uh, the edible insect on a daily basis in the world every single day. All right, so another question, Prof. Uh, can you provide hands-on training for international entomologists? I'm not really sure whether this question is related to the edible insects we are discussing just now. 
uh, what was the question? Uh, can you provide hands-on training for international entomologists? Maybe in trainings or for the workshops on the insect rearing and so on and so forth. Really? really? The edible I mean, insect industry. Through the Zoom? Through the Zoom system? Through yeah. the online system? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, why it's not? to be conducted. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. good. That probably and that's then, the issue. Yeah. The next question from Fridraus. Hi, Prof. Why is most of the insects farm in Korea is in small scale? Since Why? Korea have a lot of insects festival, That's isn't a really... it good for the farmer to enlarge their insects farm to increase their yield? Uh -huh. Why? Why it is in a small scale? Okay, I am really honest guy. Okay, the person who asked the question, please look at the number five. Okay, number five. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Number five, I make it big for you. Okay, basically, why? It, it's a kind of related with the uh, two issues. One is the politics. Number two, there are so many people to give so that we can we can invest all in one area or one region or one uh, like uh, village or one community somehow politically we have to as long as you know we are trying to politically we try to equally divide it into the different region so that they are not uh, you know fighting each other so that you know, this is the political issue. So, so that's why, that's why last year I was involved in organizing how to uh, build up the new uh, like uh, plan for the next five years, how to invest it. What is the number one priority? What is the number two priority? I said, I said, I, to my, uh, like to our government official, uh, I am saying the exactly same thing. Unless we invest uh, in a large scale, all of the places, if we, all the like uh, insect farmers, they are rearing insects in a very small scale, then when can we develop the industry? We are talking about insect industry, right? Unless we, Mass year, it's not industry, it's a hobby. I am challenging our government official. So, so for the next five years, probably the, the mass rearing system in Korea is going to be bigger and bigger. Okay, so that uh, now this day from uh, 2021, a uh, lot of people, they accept, yes, we have to mess here. Otherwise, it's not economically competitive. So they understand what is the problem. They understand what we are supposed to do this year. Okay, Pro, maybe we can get another few more questions. Uh, the next question, uh, hello Prof, I'm Iza, student from University of Malaya. From your experience, is there any report on any edible insects that may compete to carry any pathogen or parasites? Since we are looking forward to the mass production, maybe we should consider this as potential threat in the future. Thank you very much. You mean the potential uh, entomophobia? Like pathogens. Yeah, yeah, entomopathogen, especially uh, like uh, which uh, love to attack the edible insect, right? In particular, yeah. Bro. So how can we solve that problem? Okay. Yes, like uh, for example, in case of mealworm, you know, mealworm. Uh, I I do not have the slide over here. Uh, okay. 
um, <clears throat> I love the meal one. Okay, I sequence the entire genome, and then I am studying bilworm immune system. If you look at, if you are getting to Google or PubMed, you can find a lot of tenebrae or molecule, the yellow mealworm uh, like um, immunity paper. The reason that I'm studying immunity on insect, like the edible insect, such as mealworm model, I would love to enhance edible insect immunity. So recently, I inject copper uh, materials derived from the uh, beneficial microorganism, and I inject uh, uh, like a specific uh, molecules uh, one by one into the mealworm, and then after one days later, after one day, after 24 hours later, I inject the E. coli. They are all, the survivability is much, much higher because they are vaccinated one day before. In case of human, if we are going to get the coronavirus vaccine, then, then uh, you know, in order for your body to produce the antibody against the coronavirus, it'll take one month, two months, or three months, depending on the human. But in case of mealworm or in case of insect, the inducing immune system, activating immune system is not that difficult. So that, uh, that's why recently I'm uh, in the middle of writing immune priming a review paper with mealworm model. So uh, yes, uh, we inject, I inject the, the material one by one through the cuticle of the mealworm. So that's the one disadvantage, but I'm trying to develop the new way to feed the insect so that insect the overall, the immune system is kind of vaccinated so that the level of mortality could be reduced. And also in doing so, uh, the, even if mealworm is infected with certain uh, E. coli, they can, they are strong enough to uh, fight back against the pathogen. Well, it depends on the pathogen, but that's the one area that I'm doing these days. This is not a perfect answer, but this is what I can say. Okay, Prof, uh, seems that we have a limited time for our webinar this uh, afternoon. Uh, uh, before we end our webinars, let me wrap up on uh, our topic today. Uh, the edible insects can become the prospect for food security in the future because it are actually considered as environmentally friendly, high in nutrients, uh, as well as low in water requirements that will become the best protein ever we ever had in the next future. So before we end, again, thank you very much, Prof Han. Uh, thank you for the participant, participants for your question. And then also um, thanks for the great presentation. It was a pleasure to have you with us. And this will uh, actually the... Uh, the ends of our uh, webinar. And now we will hold a virtual group photo session while waiting for the technical committee ready. Everyone, please enable your camera. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So, everyone, are you ready? Okay. Um, All right, three, two, one, smile. One more time, three, two, one, smile. Right, thank you all. Bye bye. For Someday hope, I will, I yeah. would love to fly to Malaysia. Yeah, bro. We hope you have learned and enjoyed our first webinar series 2021. Stay tuned with our next Entoma webinar series, the next webinar series will be updated from time to time 
with Thank that, you. yeah, with Thank that, so stay much. safe, stay home. Assalamualaikum and goodbye. Kamsahamida. Annyeong. Thank you, Prof. Han. Thank you so much. I was very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly speaking, first time. Okay, Prof. Han. Bye. Oh, Purnama, Purnama, Professor Purnama. Are you? We're all. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you have to come to Indonesia or Malaysia, right? Yes, absolutely, yes. Okay. It's nice to meet you again, even though virtually only. Thank you, thank you, Purnama. Okay. You are my, you are my, uh, Friends, thank you so much. Yes. Okay, we'll see you. Bye. We'll send you email, yeah. Thank you.